From the Heart Center at the Luth Athletic Complex on the campus of the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts, Charter TV3 presents live coverage of college basketball. This afternoon, it's a Patriot League showdown as the Holy Cross Crusaders host the Leopards of Lafayette. It's college hoops here on Charter TV3. Hello again, everyone. Andy Lacombe alongside Kevin Wells. And uh, Kevin, you've got two teams, one and two each in the Patriot League, both in search of a win to kind of springboard them in the early part of their year. Two teams that have played some pretty hot games here in the last couple of days. Well, I think both teams actually are playing pretty well. They're playing with a lot of intensity. Holy Cross comes in at 10 and 6. On the flip side, Lafayette is 4 and 10. Uh, it's really important for both of these teams to get a win. So they're going to be going at it really hard. I think the speed and athleticism of the young guns, the sophomores, four of them at Holy Cross, might be enough to push them over the top. I love what Bill Carmody's doing here. Holy Cross basketball is absolutely back. Sophomores on both sides, really a lot of talent on both ends of the floor here. When you're talking about Lafayette and Holy Cross, each looking for a W in the Patriot League. We're coming back with the action right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Welcome to the Mayor's Forum, I'm Mayor Joe Petty. Join Mayor Petty as he sits down with local politicians, city employees, and community leaders in the city of Worcester. And there's, it's kind of 60-40 split. 60% 60 of what we really do is to solicit and bring in events, meetings, conferences, conventions into the market. We can also educate businesses and, and also inform them in terms of what their consumers are really saying. The Mayor's Forum on Charter TV3. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two-vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. And welcome back to the Hart Center. Almost set to go for Lafayette and Holy Cross. Starting lineups being announced. First for Lafayette, Isaac Suffren, Justin Jaworski, Alex Petrie, Lucas Jarrett, and Miles Cherry. A couple sophomores in that lineup. Four sophomores and a senior for Holy Cross. Caleb Green, Austin Butler, Jacob Grandison, Matt Faw, and Jahiva Floyd. For the Crusaders, who scored 94 points on Wednesday night in an overtime loss to Lehigh, who's tops in the Patriot League right now. There's Bill Carmody in his fourth season. An outstanding character, always good to talk to. And Fran O'Hanlon, 24th season for Lafayette. One of the good guys in the league as well. And he's got a good group trying to get going a little bit here. Obviously the uh, non-conference record not as good for Lafayette. They come in with an overall record of 4-10. and ten. Holy Cross at 10-6. and six. And this has not been an easy place to play for Lafayette. Crusaders lead the series 38-28. to 28. Last five seasons they've split the regular season meetings. Lafayette hasn't won here in Worcester since 2014. It's been a while. We were young men then, Kevin Wells and Andy Lacombe with you. At least one of us was young, Andy, <laughs> I'll give you that. It has been a while, and 
Holy Cross hoping to extend that streak and uh, extend kind of that home and home split that these two teams have shared over the last several seasons. Lafayette, we mentioned in the uh, in the intro, Kevin, I'm talking to the Lafayette folks. You know, they lost to Princeton and they lost to Lehigh. They lost to Lehigh 86 to 83 earlier uh, last week. And it might have been two of the best games they played all season. Holy Cross played a good game on on Wednesday, lost to Lehigh, ultimately in overtime. They were unbelievable in the first half, scored 59 points. And Lehigh, of course, picked to, uh, to win the conference. Yeah, so. and, and scoring over 80 points a game in the last eight games, sir. Eight of the last nine games for Lehigh. Tip goes out of bounds. Well, you look at you look at the tip, and you look at two players, the number one and number two shot blockers in the Patriot League this year. <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, Floyd and Jarrett. And there'll be two to watch out there as Lafayette works the ball around. First effort from three is no good, and that came from Isaac Suffren. Crusaders, this is the starting group they've used for all of their games so far, all 17, including today. Butler blocked. Now, great weak side help. Butler, who is uh, physically exceptionally strong, likes to take it in in the low post there. He's a really, really good, solid player. Uh, weak side help knocked that away. On cue was Lucas Jarrett for his first block of the game. And they go inside to Miles Cherry. Knocked away into the hands of Floyd. Here comes Holy Cross in transition. Oh, Grandison, Jacob Grandison up and in for two. Well, great fast break there by Holy Cross. Good job getting the ball up the court. Grandison, the leading scorer for Holy Cross to this point, about 15 points a game for the sophomore. Really come on here in his sophomore season. Well, you see him at the top of the key. He's 6'6", he's really long, he's exceptionally athletic, he's quick to the ball. So Holy Cross with a little advantage there. Here's Jarrett to the hoop, going up against the other shot blocker, and uh, some contact, but the ball's just out of bounds. And a shot clock violation. The Holy Cross basketball. A little challenge time there, Jarrett on Floyd. The first of many for this afternoon, Andy. The first of many. Matt Fawy. Fawy is fouled on the perimeter. Jaworski, they're going to get him for his first. Yeah, Justin Jaworski, a little hand check on the perimeter. Old Cross lost that game to Lehigh, 99-94. They're the second best scoring defense team in the Patriot League. There's Fawy off the mark, so a little out of character to give up that many points, but Lehigh is on some kind of roll right now. And they are the arch rivals of today's guests at the Hart Center, Lafayette. One of the great rivalries in college sports. There's a travel. Suffren turns the ball over. Nice job defensively by the Crusaders. Caleb Green, Londonderry, New Hampshire, the point guard. Austin Butler, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Lafayette and the man to man, they switch an awful lot. Steele comes the other way, it is Jarrett. Gets it ahead, going up strong and off the mark, suffering. Rebound, Grandison, here come the Crusaders the other way. And now Butler's gonna reset things to Grandison. Grandison, three ball. Back of the rim and in. Well, nice patience and a good job by Floyd on the pass on the reversal there. Grandison's got the game's first five points. Crusaders on top by that margin. There's Jaworski, top of the key. Eight on the shot. Jarrett. Flips it out, that is Stevens. Off the mark, rebound, Cherry. Jaworski's gonna try a three. Off the iron, no good, rebound, Austin Butler. Holy Cross wants to play fast. There's Floyd. Power move for two. 
Yeah, nice job bringing himself inside the paint, just backing the defender in right up and over the top. Talked to assistant coach Joe Kennedy before the game. Says his team wants to play fast, limit the turnovers. Holy Cross, one of the best assist to turnover teams in the country, the top team in the Patriot League. Holy Cross in a matchup doing a great job. They communicate so well. Inside, Cherry blocked by Grandison. Cherry gets it back and puts it home. No panic in Miles Cherry, the junior out of Newcastle, Australia. Yeah, nice job staying with it. There's Caleb Green for three, and he drills it. Caleb Green really led the heat surge of Crusaders shooting on Wednesday night when they were 9 of 10 from three-point land in the first half. Green had a career-high 25 points in the game against Lehigh. There's a three ball from the corner, and it's good. Uh, it's tough shot. Holy Cross did a nice job of getting out, but uh, dialed it in. Great right. job by Lafayette. Yeah, Isaac suffering on the, in the books with a three inside to go to Grandison. Nice feed from Floyd, and it's 12 to five. Grandison's got seven. Now Grandison cutting in from the weak side, and Floyd just dumping it into him. Nice play. Jaworski, baseline jumper. Rainmaker, rebound to Floyd. Here come the Crusaders. Floyd, uh -oh, another good a dish. Great movement. They go out to Butler. Floyd, that's not his shot. Paul would take that. He steps in now. Off the iron, no good. Seeing some things out of Jahiva Floyd that may be unknown about him, underrated his passing ability to the interior early on. Unless you've been around and seen the games. Not something you would think. Well, he's a senior, and uh, obviously he's got a lot of experience. That one tipped up and out of bounds. It's last touched by Lafayette. And there's a timeout on the floor. The Crusaders off to a good start at home, up seven on the Leopards. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Well, let's take a look at uh, Grandison. Here's Caleb on the break. Grandison, he just glides in. Nice job. Great job by Holy Cross moving the ball up. Good look at Caleb Green there. Nice back door cut and a nice finish again. Grandison. Holy Cross moving the basketball, Andy, exceptionally well right now. And their matchup zone defense is doing a great job. Yeah, Grandison has seven in the early going. Lafayette missed their first five shots. They're now two for 10. Crusaders, conversely, shooting 63%, five of eight from the field. So they've kind of continued the trend of how they started that game against Lehigh. Bill Carmody, last, last couple of seasons, he, one of his models was make shots. <laughs> and his team was making a lot of shots, and they have done here. Unofficial wow. model from Carmody, of course. But kind of clear, yeah. simple to the point. He is simple and to, he is to the point. He is uh, he keeps it simple and to the point. Here is Austin Butler. Austin Butler, a good football player in high school, and maybe could be a good one in college too. Grandison to the hoop, off the mark, rebound coming the other way. Grandison did a nice job of getting inside the paint, just couldn't finish it. Six ten, Sean Good into the game had that rebound for Lafayette. 
Leopards will play a lot of guys. Holy Cross might go three, four guys off the bench if that. Lafayette's going to bring a ton at you. There's a three on the way, and it's good from Petrie, Petrie rather. Well, Petrie was almost out of bounds. He was so deep on that shot. Clearly a lot of range there. Petrie, one of those dangerous three-point shooters for Lafayette. Also into the game for the Leopards is Paulus Jalice, who's been red hot lately. And they go to Benzin on Jalice, and I think they're going to get the native of Lithuania for a foul, and they will. Jalice averaging almost 16 points a game in his last five. The senior has really led kind of like this uptick in play for Lafayette. Don't have a ton of wins to show for it, but the team has certainly played a lot better in that stretch. Here's yeah, he Caleb Green. <laughs> Off the mark, rebound, Jalice. Jalice, one of those guys, just by the way he's playing and the way he can shoot from the perimeter. Joe Kennedy said they were going to look for him, make sure they knew where he was on the floor at all times. Foul in the middle of the floor. It looks like it might be on, it's on Caleb Green. Twelve eight, Holy Cross holds the lead. Rebounding and they get it into good. Perry for three. Off the mark. Rebound comes back to Holy Cross. Crusaders like to go up tempo and now Dave Green's gonna wait for the rest of his group. Green to the hoop. Off the mark. Jack Floyd right there to put it back. Well again. One of the leading rebounders, you can tell you know, there's penetration by one of the guards. He puts himself in the best position to get the potential miss. Crusaders by six. Coming up on 12 minutes left here in the first half. Perry, and this is Kyle Stout, another three-point threat for Lafayette. Four on a shot. Back into Jalice, it's gonna be him. One second on the shot clock, he makes the fall away. Uh, the one step, you know, a step away off of one foot. Big bucket. Crusaders setting up that offense. And he tried to kick it out to Benzin and off the mark that time. And we're gonna get a timeout on the floor with the Holy Cross Crusaders on top, 14 to 10. Back and forth here early on from the Heart Center. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Wednesday nights during the winter in Central Mass mean one thing. It is hockey night. Di Gregorio, good vision. Find Sean Clark, one-timer laser show for the goal. In boys basketball, it is McMinnis. Alley-oop to Hunter for the throwdown. Being Damian Como. Como, forget the jelly, we want the jam. In girls basketball. Rockets pulling out the range finder. It's Jacqueline Landry with the three. Well, we look at the Lafayette Leopards, Andy. You know, they've done a pretty nice job of sharing the basketball. They've got range on the outside. The ability to knock down that three-pointer. They spread the offense pretty nice, but then when they need to, there's a step away. Nice job there. Holy Cross, plus four, 11-26. Holy Cross have made their first five of the first eight shots. They've made one of their last four now. And Lafayette within four. Statistically, both teams very close with rebounds, field goal percentage. Jalice to Petrie. 
At least finding good, and they try a little alley-oop. Good makes it the second time. Well, great look inside. And good, although he missed it, he stayed with it and got the tip. Very long, 6'10", presence in the middle. He's just a freshman. Green with the backdoor cut, another backdoor cut to Grandison, didn't go. And Grandison pats his chest, says my fault. It was a good feed from his teammate. Looks and like another turnover for Holy Cross. Little 1-2-2, one, 1-2-1-1, two, two, one, two, one, one, full court passive zone press. See if they trap out of it in the half or they just go back to the matchup. Three turnovers apiece in the early going for both squads. Coming up on the halfway point of the first half. Petrie thought about it. Now he's going to drive, pulls up, took an extra step, traveling. And go to Holy Cross. Holy Cross defensively doing a nice job communicating. They're vocal, they're pointing, uh, they're moving their feet. Contained pressure by Lafayette. Sears quickly advancing the basketball, looking inside. Lloyd back to Grandison, and now to Pat Benson. Grandison for three. Yes, drills it. Automatic quick release by Grandison. Almost stolen. Ten points for Grandison. There is Kyle Stout. He's looking for Jalice, couldn't get to him. Now they get it into Jalice. Guarded by Floyd, Jalice pulls up and it rattles out. Pat Benson, who played a year at Worcester Academy, gets it ahead to Green. Caleb Green lays it up and in. The Jet, very quick off the bounce. Nice job going off the window with the left-handed reverse layup. Holy Cross back with the pass of 1-2-2. Two, two. Haven't seen as many people as quick to the basket as Caleb Green. And he finishes when he gets there. Going up, Grandison the rebound off of the Jalice miss. Here comes Holy Cross the other way. Coach Carmody, I thought there might have been a travel there too. I think that that was the message he was uh, telling the officials. Floyd puts a pretty good move on Good and draws the foul. Well, let's take a look. Works his way inside and then gets by. Kind of got a shoulder nudge a little there. Floyd is, uh, this is not his strength, the foul shooting. Comes in, just a 48% free throw shooter. Off the back iron there. Made his first three in the game on Wednesday night. And he makes one of two there. Gets replaced by Matt Faw. Jahiva Floyd is a force, and he's a guy in the middle that can really take over a game if he gets going. He's had a tremendous season so far. And here's Brandison, almost took that away. Petrie three, good. Knocks it down. Kyle Copeland in the ball game for Holy Cross. Copeland, another sophomore. He's got range to shoot. This is Grandison for three. He's three for three from beyond the arc. Off to a great start. Real leader for this Crusader team. Crusaders lead is eight. Inside, Jalice kicks it back out. This is a long three. Had to be Petrie, it was. Rebound, Holy Cross. Petrie, one of the top three-point shooters in the Patriot League. This one's out to Faw for three. Back iron, no good. Well, Faw definitely not afraid to shoot it. Just hasn't had much success this afternoon. Jalice for three, and that's all net for Paulus Jalice, who's come on with a quick five points off the bench. 
Great enunciation there, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. It's the Lithuanian in me, I think. I don't know. I don't know if I have any, but Lafayette stays man to man. Matching straight up. Ten on the shot. Faw kicks it out. Here's Grandison. He's gonna shoot it. Rims out. Rebound knocked away, and Sherry comes away with it. And a foul down the other end. We're going to get a timeout on the floor. Holy Cross on top of Lafayette, continuing to lead the Crusaders by five now. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. People live, listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Stirbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We haven't. We met selectmen on this show that want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. Well, there's a shot that goes up. Benzin brings the ball up, gets it to uh, Caleb Green, and there it is. You know, we talk about his quickness with the ball in his with the ball in his hands. You can see it right into your living room. He takes it off the bounce, goes hard to the basket, uses his body exceptionally well to protect the ball, lays it in off the window. The Crusaders with a five-point advantage at the seven-minute mark. Crusader fans, remember Anthony Thompson, very quick to the to the rim like Caleb Green. Justin Burrell, who is a, an assistant coach for Lafayette in his third year, former Crusader guard who could take the ball to the hoop as well in recent years. <laughs> Roger Breslin's here. He could do it as well back in, the, in my day. I saw Ronnie Perry Sr. and Jr. come in, still supporting the Crusaders. Petrie knocks down his third three of the first half. The lead for Holy Cross is cut to two. Petrie, uh, last rookie of the year, I believe, last year in the Patriot League. Get it back out, recovered by Austin Butler. And that's exactly what it was, Butler being uh, very quick to get it. They go inside the Butler, he could not turn around and convert it. Stevens with it for Lafayette. Jarrett. There is Jaworski. No, he's going to kick it back out to Petrie range. Seven on the shot. Driving on Faw. Faw got a piece of it. Great block. Faw, 6 9. He's really long. Great timing. Nice job there defensively to get a piece of it. In the oh boy. boy. For the flush. Floyd is really quick off his feet, jumps really, really well to go along with being 6'8". Jahiva's got seven. Turn around for Jarrett, and it falls home. First points of the day for Lucas Jarrett. Floyd sets a screen for Green. Now it's back to Floyd and off the screen to Benzin. Benzin jumper. Swish. Well, nice pull up. Back to the 1 2 2. Contained pressure. Nice job. Now they're in the zone. Matching. Inside. Cherry oh. blocked away by Faw. Here come the Crusaders. With numbers the other way. And it's deflected out by Stevens. A really nice job by E.J. Stevens to get back defensively. 
Well, great timing by Farr coming in to help out there. Outstanding block. Well, a little bit of thunder here coming from Mr. Floyd. Really quick off his feet, one power dribble and a flush. 27-23, Holy Cross. Jaiva goes up, there's little doubt he's gonna put that thing down. Jaiva Floyd, and he is, this is something we've seen a lot more of this year, the drive and finish. Well, and he's tough off the bounce, you know, the lefty, once you get him in the lane going to a strong side, it's very, very difficult to stop him from scoring the basketball. He's got nine now. Garrett with Grandison on him. Sumpern almost lost it. Almost stolen by the Crusaders. Solid defense, six on the shot. Sumpern. Great defense. Jarrett inside to good, he got a piece of it, and then he knocks home another one. He's just padding the numbers down there is Sean Good. He's got four. Very close to a shot clock violation. Second time he's tipped it, touched the rim, and tipped it in again. Grandison thought about it. Butler thought about it and ripped it. Three ball for Austin Butler. Who's in the books now? Well, he's bulldog strong and he can shoot the lights out when he heats up. Just a good example. Big rebounder for the Crusaders as well as a guard. Bob Chesney will be a guest of uh, Brenna Wilson interview on, at halftime. I asked Bob Chesney during the football season about Austin Butler as a football player and his eyes kind of lit up. <laughs> I said, I don't think you're gonna get him away from Carmody. Here come the Crusaders, here comes Butler leading the way. Slams it home. Oh, that's a Rob Gronkowski type tight end, right? Yeah, I tell you, I think he was a quarterback in high school and he's just got that grittiness. Hits the floor, flies up and down the floor. Tough. Nice ball fake, got Floyd off his feet. Stout out to Jaworski for three and he drills it. Tough shot. Good answer from Justin Jaworski with Butler right in his face. So yeah. it, it wasn't a defensive breakdown. Jaworski a 44% three-point shooter. Inside they try to get, and Jaworski knocked it away. Tried to get it to Benzin, here comes Lafayette. Suffering. Freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Inside Jared, he's gonna throw it down. Well, he had Floyd beat him along the baseline and then there was no weak side help. He had a lot of daylight. Quick 5-0 stretch for Lafayette to cut the lead down to four and that one knocked away. As they were looking inside to Jahiva Floyd and there's a timeout on the floor. Continues to be tight here in Worcester. 34-30, Holy Cross. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Well, I'll tell you one thing, let's just take a look. There's a lot of high wire, high flying acts this afternoon here at Holy Cross as the Crusaders are putting on a little bit of a dunk show when the opportunity presents itself. But then the Leopards of Lafayette are saying, not so quickly, I want my chance. Yeah, both teams shooting the ball pretty well. Holy Cross still shooting at a 61% clip here from the floor and Lafayette has come up, they're shooting 43% now. Including six of 11 from beyond the arc. 
Andy, during the timeout, we were talking about, you know, pride and dedication and commitment. And uh, you want to talk about somebody that's excited about being part of a team. I was looking at the team manager over there. I'm sure we're going to get a shot of it, of Lafayette. Oh, my goodness. And he's got yes. that whole complete leopard uh, A leopard suit. On. suit. Like legitimately leopard <laughs> suit. Butler, his three tipped no good, but it's tipped back to Holy Cross. They get a new possession. Pat Benza, again, his experience, he wants to slow it down. He pulled it out. He told his teammates, let's just reset. Here's Green for three. Uh, Drills it. Butler to Green. Nice pass on the reversal. Big bucket for Holy Cross. Crusaders are six of nine from three-point land here in the first half. They were nine of 10 on Wednesday. They really have been shooting the three well here in the first half so far. Nice job coming from behind by Floyd, almost creating a turnover. Six on the shot. Petrie trying to get some space, pulls up. That's a two off the mark. And the rebound collected by Butler. Yeah, Holy Cross was 9 of 10 in the first half. They went cold a lot in the second half in that Lehigh game. But they are 6 of 9 here. Good for 67% from three-point land. Lehigh staying tough man-to-man. -to -man. And again, away from the ball, they're dropping deep into the paint. Grandison kicks it back out to Floyd. Five on the shot clock. Butler's got to pull it. And he rips it! Another three for Butler. He's got eight. Biggest lead of the ball game, the Crusaders by 10. And a timeout taken by Lafayette. They want to use theirs before the half expires. 18 seconds remaining. And the Leopards now find themselves down by 10. Let's see if we can find that guy with the leopard suit there after this replay. Take a look. Boy, I'll tell you, he's really showing off his range. Austin Butler. Solid as a rock. He's got a good scoring mentality. That's Austin Butler. Hard-nosed basketball player for the Crusaders. There he is, Kevin. Look at it. So he's got the suit, but he also has the tie to match. Un it's a full leopard outfit. Uh, you know what? I, I just got to tell you, there's someone missing today, and I know that he kind of has a fetish for stuff like yeah, that. He would love I'll that. I'll bet you Kevin Shea allowed him to borrow that. He would. It could be Kevin's. Kevin loves costumes. That is outstanding. That, that guy is the MVP. Oh, it is. For Lafayette right there. That is outstanding stuff. Either that or he lost a bet with one of the guys on the team, but a friendly wager, of course. But uh, that was, <laughs> that is some commitment right there. Zignorski in the ball game for Holy Cross. And time is going to, oh, Benson gets one off. But it will expire at the end of the first half. Holy Cross, 40. Lafayette, 30. We're coming back with our halftime interview and stats and replays from the Heart Center right after this. Local sports have a unique way of bringing families together, bringing generations together, bringing neighbors together. Central Mass, you have families that have been here for years and you have grandparents that played at a certain high school and they're watching their grandson or granddaughter play at their same high school. And there's something real special about that. Everyone comes out on a Friday night for football or to support the basketball team or the softball team and everyone wants to support their team and everyone feels whether or not they have a son or daughter playing or even if they don't know anyone on the roster, they come out because they went to school there or they're from that town. And for us to be able to cover that is really unique, really special and really gratifying. We'll run into people all the time, whether they're home from college or they're visiting family and they don't live in the area anymore. Or they'll say, hey, how's my team doing? You know, how are these guys going to be this year? And so people remember where they came from. They remember their high schools. They remember their playing days. And if you were from here, you know how unique and how special it is that you can get coverage of your high school and your college. We have a bond with uh, the community. They appreciate us. We appreciate them to hear people cheer for you when you show up because you're just there covering the game. We're not the game, but it's cool. <laughs> I've had people tell me that we've brought high school sports to a whole new level in Central Mass because of the way we cover 
high school sports and cover them like they're professional athletes. Join me on the Hank Stoltz Experience. People are always asking me, what is the experience? Well, that's the beauty of it. It's everything that has to do with Central Massachusetts. From the politics of the region to the great events that are going on each and every weekend or every night right here in Central Mass. You don't want to miss a single moment as I discuss exciting new topics with a variety of different guests on each show. The action never stops on the Hank Stoltz Experience, only on Charter TV 3. Then you actually have to make the argument, we need the border to be open so heroin addicts won't become desperate. Believe me, there are people who will buy that stupid argument. I mean, because I, I, I know how to think like these people. Look, if, if there was a way to do it and you could make money off of it, somebody would do it. These are the things CNN does. And yet, you know who's watching CNN? You're listening to The Jim Polito Show, your safe space. People listen to us up in Gardena, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Sturbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We have we met selectmen on this show that want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. Welcome back, Holy Cross on top of Lafayette. 40 to 30 in this key Patriot League matchup in men's basketball. We are at halftime. And while we have this chance, it's a very busy time for the uh, Holy Cross football program. Early recruits and signees are already in, and there's still more to come. Our Brenna Wilson catching up with head football coach Bob Chesney. Thanks, Andy. Coach. First year under your belt here at Holy Cross. Yeah. What, you know, now you've had time to look back and look back on the season. What can you take away from it? Uh, a lot of growth. You know, I think as a, as a team in general, the, I, I thought the one thing that stood out to me was just our team's toughness, our competitiveness, our resiliency. I think that's a word that uh, you're going to look back on this season and certainly when you reflect on it, you're going to use that word. Uh, the start of the season was not very good. Um, you know, lost a couple in there that maybe we should not have and played some opponents that just were a lot better than us, you know, frankly. Uh, and then you get to the second half and I thought we did a nice job. I thought we did a really good job of being in games, uh, never, you know, never quitting and then finding a way at the end to win. And, and that is something that, again, that little slow starts in all of those games and always playing from behind, but the resiliency stands out. You just wish that you were in a position that you didn't have to be fighting from so far you know, behind. And those are things you know, we know we have to work on as we move forward. And you kind of talked about it too, that you know, Harvard seemed to be kind of a turning point for this yeah. season. What did you see from the team that you know, helped you guys win out those last four games of the season? Yeah, well, I think at Harvard, it started to become an understanding of what you know, we needed to do and what we were trying to do. It didn't look a whole lot like a real defense or a real offense in, in those first couple games. And I think that, you know, that just comes with time. And I think the minute that you throw it out there in fire and try to test it against some very formidable opponents, it's not, we were not playing division three schools. You know, we were, we were playing some from Colgate to, you know, Boston College to New Hampshire to Harvard to Yale to, you know, those, that's, that's a tough, tough run at the beginning of that. But again, what the way we played it and who we played are the two things that I think stood out. And like we talked about on some of those Tuesday press conferences, those are things that I think helped us in the end be able to finish as strong as we did because of who we played and more importantly because of how we played. Right. And how important is it, you know, to finish the season as you did, you know, heading into the off season too? Yeah, I mean, momentum, right? It's always going to be about positive momentum and, and trying to, you know, build as much of that as you possibly can. And I think for us, you know, to close out like we did with those couple wins at the end and then, you know, know that we're rolling that into the off offseason, uh, finishing second in the conference, a great win at Georgetown. Terrible, again, first three quarters, but a great finish. Uh, you know, those are all things that we can certainly, you know, be proud of and, and, you know, look to replicate. There's a lot of things we need to improve upon, and then there's quite a few that we would like to replicate. And, and every team's going to get better. You know, we're going to get a little younger here in, in the meantime, which is, you know, something that, you know, obviously presents its, its uh, issues. But at the same time, I think that it'll be people that uh, believe in what we're doing. I like the class we brought in, and I like them not only, you know, as people, as football players, but I like their history and, and some of the things that they've been able to do as far as establishing themselves as winners in high school. 
yeah, that, that recruiting class that you brought in, what are you seeing from them and what, what do you hope to, to for them to bring to the team as well? Well, the depth, right? And, you know, we, we're going to end up graduating, I think, 18 seniors. Uh, I look at the defensive line and I look at the linebacker position. There's a lot of production in those two groups and three of them are gone and four of the linebackers are gone. Three de uh, defensive linemen and four linebackers are graduating. So those were issues, you know, that we certainly needed to uh, improve upon. But we knew that last year. You don't necessarily, you know, replace everybody in this class. You know, you hope you would have done that the year before. And I think that we did a nice job of that. We got there a little bit late, so there's a, there's some things in there that, you know, could have fell our way and just did not, you know, for, because we didn't have enough time to develop, you know, some of the relationships. But the guys we got in that class, I think, are going to be able to fill some of the roles and some of the voids that are open, you know, by based on this class, you know, graduating. Yeah, and, you know, you kind of said that, too. This recruiting class coming in now, these are some of the guys that you were able to look for and stuff. So how does that, you know, help you this year? Because, you know, last year you guys were trying to – make those relationships coming yeah. in. Yeah, well, I think the talent level you'll see will just be a little bit different. You know, this talent level of these guys, you know, is going to be something, you know, they're very productive football players. They're really, again, great people. And at the same time, they've come from winning, you know, programs. And those are three things that we really look for as we go through this process. Uh, you know, but again, they're, they're our, you know, our guys. All the guys on our team are our guys. These guys are signing up for exactly what we're, you know, talking about from the beginning. Not everybody on this team has done that, but they have all bought in. And that's pretty evident when you get further on into that, you know, Georgetown game or the end of the Fordham game or at the end of any of those other games that we were in close games where we come back and fought. Everybody believes right now. Now it's just a matter of us developing it, taking it to the next level, continuing to introduce more and more talent into each position room and create competition in every single room. We don't want to be in a situation where someone knows they're the starter, they're comfortable being the starter, and, and you know, they act that way. You want them to act like a starter but compete you know, like they are you know, one of the, the young freshmen coming into this program. Yeah, and you know, a lot of young guys getting some experience last year. How important is that heading into this year? You know, they were able to make those mistakes, as you said, but learn from that and then hopefully huge. grow. Yeah, it's huge. I think there's a lot of freshmen that have had a chance to play for us, uh, and I think that that's something that's certainly going to, you know, worth its weight in gold. To, to, Freshmen are freshmen, and the best thing about freshmen is they eventually become sophomores, right? And I think that's what we're looking at here with a lot of these guys that, that you know, played some pretty impressive minutes for us, and we're going to need them to do uh, even a better job as they come back out here in the fall. Now, you're kind of like a kicker, like soothsayer or something, <laughs> you know, with yeah. Cole Tracy and then Derek here. What do you kind of look for in a kicker? What, how, what do you see in kickers when you're recruiting? Well, I mean, there's a lot of... You know, just as, as far as you go through technique, there's a lot of that that's in there. The way they strike the football, you know, is, is important. You know, the finish, there's a million things that you look at. Their contact, they, are they fully, there's a lot of technical things, but more so than anything when you meet someone and, and they're confident. You know, they, there's, you know, certain ways that certain people carry themselves, but you want that person to be as much a member of this football team as anybody else. You don't want them to think about themselves as a kicker. You don't want them to think about they're going to lift weights with resistance bands and they're going to do things their own way because their kicking coach told them. You want them to be a football player and you want them to be a teammate first and foremost. And that's what I think you see with Cole. That's what you see with any of the guys, Tad, any of the guys we've had in the past is that they've been football players. And, and that is part of the interview process for us. We don't want just a kicker. We want someone who is a football player, part of that team. So when a kick is missed, the kicker didn't miss it, a part of our team missed it. When a kick is made, the kicker didn't make it, part of our team made it. And those are very important things that I think as far as technique is important, but that's probably the second most important thing. And that's a big one. And I think a lot of people maybe miss on that one. Now, Cole Tracy has had an unbelievable career and you obviously coach him over at Assumption. What does it mean to see all the stuff that he's been able to accomplish? I mean, it's just, I think we, we knew, you know, that Cole was going to be able to accomplish all this. That's not, that's not a, a question for us. When, when people would say, can he kick in front of those crowds? Yes, <laughs> he can kick in front of those crowds. He can kick in front of anybody. He's very confident. He's very competent. He's very capable. Those are the things when I look at him, you know, that I just get excited that the rest of the world gets to see it. You know, it's things we knew, uh, but the rest of the world gets to see it. And again, when we're down there, uh, when I'm down there, I'm not there for Cole Tracy the kicker. I'm there for Cole Tracy the person. Now, this weekend, um, Jimmy Murray is competing. Awesome, huh? And what yeah. does that mean you know, for the program to be able to have these guys that are competing at such a high level? Yeah, Peter's out there, Khalif's out there, you know, from across town. Scotty Simonson's with the Jet, and then here's Jimmy, you know, doing what he's doing. It's awesome. It, I mean, it just really sort of 
uh, solidifies everything we hope to talk about. We don't want to just be football players, but we want life after college football to open up a lot of different doors. And for us to have you know, three guys in NFL camps last year, that's a big deal. You know, for us to have guys coming up this next year that will have a chance to be in NFL camps, it's a big deal. When I think back across town, there's three or four guys capable of being in NFL camps you know, next year. Those are things that are very important. I think those are things that not only are we able to take these young student athletes and football players and, and turn them into you know, uh, great profession, professionals, which you're going to see from our alumni base, which they're going to help them get jobs. I think that that is the most impressive thing. But the fact that that door to the NFL football, you know, or to NFL football or to or arena football or to you know, any of those other you know, professional football leagues is available now, that's something that I think everybody could look at and say, I could have it all. I could have everything I want from this place. It can be accomplished, and I think that is the case. Now, you guys are starting up your spring practices soon. What do you hope to see from the team as you start into this next season? Uh, I'd like to see uh, uh, us understanding what mistakes we've made, us understanding you know, maybe where we came up a little short, addressing it critically, you know, evaluating it, not, not sugarcoating it, not us feeling like we have something that we don't have there, but critically evaluating one another, making sure we hold ourselves accountable, and then make sure whatever we were good at, we get great at you know, or even a little further than that. And whatever we were not good at, we, we try to make into one of our strengths. Our weaknesses have to become our strengths, and then our strong strengths have to become, start to take us to a different, a different level. Well, we are looking forward to the new season. Tough, tough, tough season ahead for you as yeah. well, but it's going to be an exciting one. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your time, and good luck this year. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Back to you, Andy. All right, Brenna, thank you very much. Bob Chesney always on message, too. On the recruiting tour, here's some first-half highlights from this one. Lafayette, they hit some threes in bunches there early on, and Jalice had it going. No, they've done a nice job of getting the ball inside, getting the ball outside. They've had a little bit of a dunk show, but Holy Cross overall has done a great job of sharing the basketball. They've run their offensive sets defensively. They've done a really, really nice job. Good look there. Yeah, Matt Faw, a couple of blocks. Doesn't have any points, but a few blocks. And then here's the dunk-a-thon for Holy Cross. Right. And Austin you know. Butler with some big points at the end of that first half to stretch the lead to 10. Here's where we look at it, Kevin. And you, talk, you touched on it when we were off here at halftime. The free throws, we'll get to that in a second. Holy Cross still shooting at 62%. Lafayette, 40%. Three point field goals, 70% for Holy Cross. Holy Cross is one of two from the, the foul line. Lafayette hasn't taken a foul shot yet. So there hasn't been a lot of, other than timeouts, there hasn't been a lot of stop and play for going to the free throw line. Sure. You know, the rebounds, there's a lot of parity there. I think a big difference, you know, you look at Holy Cross with 16 points inside the paint, comparatively speaking to 10, you know, for the Leopards. Uh, but Holy Cross with a 10 point advantage, they're gonna have to come out of the gate right away and set tempo and uh, you know, set their defensive uh, stance immediately. Holy Cross statistically and over the last couple of years, one of the, not one of the better rebounding teams in the Patriot League. They're last in rebounding margin this year as well. Lafayette is top five in rebounding margin. Holy Cross has a slight edge on Lafayette. If that holds true, there's a good sign for Holy Cross. This is, is a tough way to tough way to for Lafayette to come back if Holy Cross continues to to be even on the boards. That's usually a formula for success for Bill Carmody's team. And uh, if they can keep up that shooting, there's that as well. Next Friday night, we are at Bartlett High School. Grafton and Bartlett should be a competitive game in the Southern Worcester County League. A good old barn down there at Bartlett. Tony Peranto's bunch will be ready to go, no doubt. Our game coverage begins live at 7 p.m. The venerable Fran O'Hanlon, there's Justin Burrell to his left, or to his right, depending on which way you're looking at it. On the bench there, the former point guard from Milan Brown and Holy Cross. JB's got a maroon tie on now. Kind of feel a little strange for the uh, Virginia native to come back to the the old gym and the opposing gear. Well, you know the difference. Uh, and that is that uh, the almighty dollar pays the bills. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's got a career going now. Yeah, good for him. Wish him the best. Good kid. 
guess you can look at it like as an alum when he makes donations. <laughs> it's coming from Lafayette to Holy Cross. It's Creed with a little reverse layup to start things. Crusader lead is 12. Green made it difficult on Jarrett getting it up the floor, too. Leopards, no foul shots in that first half. Really didn't drive the basket that much. A lot of perimeter shots. Here's a drive to the basket. And up and in. Finish nice. from Suffren. Yeah, great job taking it to the basket. Basket, rather. Isaac Suffren. Nice reverse layup off the glass. Here goes Caleb Green. And they find Grandison, top of the key for three. Back iron, no good. And Faw kept it alive, but out of bounds. Nice job, again, moving the basketball. Led to an open look at the top of the key. The way these guys play, a lot of them sophomores, again, four sophomores in the starting lineup for Holy Cross. They've got a lot of minutes, some of them as freshmen, and get a lot of minutes now. And I asked Joe Kennedy, it's easy for the fan to overlook the fact that you have four sophomores. Do you? He goes, no, we do not <laughs> overlook the fact that we have four sophomores. We know we have a ways to go. And these guys are very good and play a lot of minutes and are getting better. But they're still just sophomores. There's still, yeah. still a ways to go in the process. Sometimes is that expectation of a sophomore slump that you got to play through. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the more they play, the better they know the system. And they have played well for the most part here all the way through their sophomore season. Connor Nigo's on the bench with an injury, and he's another one. Kyle Copeland, who we saw briefly in the first half. Really talented class. There's Green to the hoop. And off the mark, Jahiva Floyd, weak side rebound, and he's fouled going up. So Jahiva Floyd will go back to the line. He's the only one who's been to the foul line in this game. Well, when you think about it, again, Caleb Green is very, very bright. As soon as he dribble drives in terms of his basketball IQ as well as his academics, he takes it hard to the rack. He sees that Floyd's got the inside position on the right side of the rim. He's got to get it up there. And it's, he knows the chances are that Floyd's the one that's going to be scraping it off the glass. There were only five fouls called in the first half. It was the first one of the second half. One of two things. It's either a very clean game or two, they're letting him play. Yeah, I like that. You've got to let him play a little bit. Floyd's one of two, so he's right on his average. Two for four today, 50% from the line. Jalis, there's a deep, deep three. That is Petrie, and he drills it again. Yeah, that's a uh, incredibly deep three. Long, well beyond the NBA arc. 12 points, four threes for Petrie. Crusaders had a guy named Lance Tejada go off for 36 with 10 threes in the Lehigh game on Wednesday. Faw thought about the three, gets bumped by Jalis, and they're going to get him for a foul. Uh, again, great ball movement, nice sh uh, shot fake by Faw. 6'9", he's very fluid. Yeah. There was a time during the Rhode Island game at the DCU Center that Jahiva Floyd was hurt. Faw and Nigo were the big men, and they helped really lead Holy Cross back. Ultimately, a game was pulled away late and won by URI. There goes Floyd for two more. Well, again, once he gets enough space to get himself into the lane off the bounce, he's able to just go up and over the vast majority of his opponents. The only reason I say it on the URI game is it showed the talent that Faw and Eagle and some of these other sophomores had. So you want Floyd in the game. But when he was out, they played pretty well for a stretch. That one off the mark, rebound by Faw. Matt Benzin, a Massachusetts native. Caleb Green from New Hampshire inside to Faw. Faw, fall away. And it rattles in. A lot of confidence in that shot. Faw's from Pennsylvania, just to complete the geography tour we just had on that possession. <laughs> Jalice bumps it out to Jaworski. Jaworski driving, laying it up and in a floater over Floyd. You 
got to be a little bit, you have to be somewhat brave to do that because Floyd's coming in, bearing down on you. And lays it in off the glass. Here goes Floyd. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, boy. What? Speed to here the I am. Here I am clapping. <laughs> well, what a I mean, great move. So, sometimes you can't help yourself when you see something <laughs> like that. Wow. Spectacular take. Driver Floyd's got 14 points to lead all scorers. There is Stevens. Turnaround jumper, no. Rebound, Faw. Just that drive to the hoop that, and that finish, that speed. Jahiva, you saw glimpses of it in the last couple of years, and he's really taken it home this year. Green off the mark, kept alive by Floyd. Got up over Jarrett. No, he's just, you know, Floyd is so quick off the bounce, you know, and then he, he just gets up exceptionally quick as well. Anderson back inside to Floyd. Thought about it. Out to Faw. Faw. They're going to get three seconds to three call seconds. against Holy Cross. A turnover for the Crusaders, and we have a timeout on the floor. Holy Cross's lead is 12, 15, 01 left. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Well, we talk about Mr. Floyd, Andy. Let's take a look. There he gets space, takes it hot to the basket. Nice dribble drive and a great finish off the glass. And then that, I'll tell you, high wire act of cutting through the lane, spin dribble, and then the lane off the glass. You know, it just shows his athleticism. Yeah, how you keep body control when you're moving that fast and you have to be some kind of athlete. Good shape there. Driver Floyd is certainly all those things. And around the gym at, from times, I don't know if it's a for a project or not. We've, I've seen him with a camera as a photo journalist during the women's game. So I don't know if that's a project he's working on or something he's into. But uh, could be a hobby. Seen a different side of Jahiva Floyd this, uh, this winter. Spinning around here. Here's Petrie, space, three. In and out, rebound, Randison. Nice job defensively. They're getting it below the 10 second mark of the shot clock. You know, doing a great job containing and keeping pressure on the ball. Petrie, one of those guys who can get hot from three point land. Here goes oh Floyd, spinning back. Oh, just short, short on that one. Short armed it. But he put a good move on Dylan Hastings there. A sophomore for Lafayette. Here's Jalice, kicks it out. That's Hastings. Jalice gonna work on oh, Floyd. Nice cross. Good move, and he lays it up and in. Nice stuff there yep, from nice Paulus Jalice. Right to left crossover, took it right into the thick of things, laid it in. Jalice has seven. Here's Caleb Green. Runs into a roadblock, turns it back out to Butler. It's going to try to use that screen and try to work on Hastings. Got blocked. Grandison got blocked. The way. Good help there. Looked like Stout might have got a piece of it. Ten point advantage for Holy Cross. That's Hastings. Jaworski, a good three point shooter. So is Petrie. Petrie's deep. This one's off the mark. Rebound is Grandison. That one never looked like it had a chance from our vantage point here. 
but it'll be a short memory for Petrie because he's a shooter. No worries there. Good dish oh, into nice Grandison, job. who uses his speed to get to the hoop. You know, again, a great give and go, as fundamental as you can get. Great execution by Holy Cross. 15 for the sophomore Grandison. Deep three. Stout off the mark. Jaworski tried to keep it alive, out of bounds. Off oh. of Lafayette. Crusaders are going to get Matt Faw back into the game, give Jehiva Floyd a break. And the Leopards look to extend the defense here. Here's Pat Benson, the senior quarterback, taking control here. Yeah, it's just Benson and Floyd in the senior class. Overall, young group. Matt Zignorski as well on the bench. Ziggy, a three-point specialist. Here is Grandison off the mark. Rebound, Hastings. Quickly comes Lafayette, driving the hoop this time. Ball is out of the hands, and here comes Holy Cross in transition. Up ahead to Caleb Green, who lays it up. And in. Caleb Green has 12. 14 point advantage for the Crusaders. Crusaders with three in double figures. And that a little miscue. Uh, As Suffren looked inside and threw it through everybody. It's a 14 point advantage for Holy Cross at the under 12 minute timeout. We're back with more from the Heart Center after this. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Wednesday nights during the winter in Central Mass mean one thing. It is hockey night. Di Gregorio, good vision. Find Sean Clark, one-timer laser show for the goal. In boys basketball, it is McMinnis. Alley-oop to Hunter for the throwdown. Being Jamie and Como. Como, forget the jelly, we want the jam. In girls basketball. Rockets pulling out the range finder. It's Jacqueline Landry with the three. Well, Andy, you talk about timing, you talk about the ability to share the ball. Ball gets dumped in by Floyd, by Grandison, and then Grandison gets rid of it again. And again, here you take a look at Caleb Green out in front of the pack. Great pass, good fast break for Holy Cross. Crusaders, one of the best teams in the, air, the land, best team in the Patriot League in taking care of the basketball. Only, they only have five turnovers today. Holy Cross has a 14 to five assist to turnover ratio today, so far. That was the seventh turnover that we just saw for Lafayette, so they played relatively clean to this point, but they only have six assists to go with their baskets. There's 16 field goals to this point. Boy, what a floor general Caleb Green is oh, for only a sophomore. Space for Floyd. It closed quickly, but he muscles it home. Well, as soon as they doubled down on him, there was contact, and they ended up backing up and giving him enough state space to go up strong. 16 points for Jahiva Floyd. Leading score for Holy Cross on the floor. Hey, run it, run it, run it, hey. Stevens tried to work against Benzin. Two on the shot clock. One, did he? I don't think he got it off. No. He did not. Shot clock violation. It'll be a Holy Cross basketball. Bill Carmody in the post game at Lehigh said that he thought at times the, the people were critical of Holy Cross for holding the ball deep in the shot clocks and working the offense and slowing tempo. That time his team just got a defensive stop on a shot clock violation. But 
What he said was the team could really just play all kinds of different paces. And it was echoed by Joe Kennedy today where you know, last year they're not, Holy Cross not quite as explosive as they are now. The stats bear it out. Crusaders averaging about 67 points, 68 points a game. Well, you have to value every possession. If that means you've got to use the shot clock to try to get a good look, then so be it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that uh, like every coach in the country, let's take the best shot, the first shot we get. But if you don't have a real good shot, you're going to have to fort. Oh, oh, boy. Get a foul against the Crusaders. It's against Benzin. Again, and it's a shot clock down to three. Well, kind of went behind his back. I thought they were going to get him for a travel here. Let's take a look at it. We'll take a close look at it. Yep, definitely some contact, but I think it was because that the foul was called because he got the ball caught on his back when he's trying to go behind his back. Yeah. Anytime they, I've, you see the two hands on a player that seem to get that call this year. There's Benson gets it back with a steal. He wasn't going to be denied the ball. No, he was getting it one way or another. A little miscue there by Faw to Floyd, but off of Lafayette. Lafayette averages almost 75 points a game. And uh, they're well below that. Crusader scoring defense, second in the Patriot League, giving up just 67 points a game. Crusaders just score, score about 69 points a game. They're above that pace right now. But they have shown some explosiveness, scoring in the 90s in wins, in the 80s in games this year. That I don't think they thought they may have had last season. They also are averaging almost 69 points a game that they give up. Yeah. If Floyd a little skyhook off the mark. Oh, you you gotta like that. That's something that uh, is almost non-existent. Tipped out and in the hands of Butler. Here come the Crusaders. Benzin. Caleb Green spins in the lane, turnaround jumper, no, rebound, Butler, Butler, up, and off glass and two more for Austin Butler. Well, again, reverse pivot, great patience, nice strong move on the offensive rebound and put back. He's got 10, four Crusaders in double figures, and a timeout taken by Fran O'Hanlon on the Lafayette bench. He wants to talk to the Leopards. The lead is stretched out to 18 for Holy Cross. Crusaders trying to pick up a home win. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. People listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Sturbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We haven't. We got selectmen on this show that they want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. All right, welcome back. Our friend, the uh, manager from Lafayette, you talk getting some good airtime, and, des and deservedly so. Yeah, you talk about class, you know. I mean, that is a, uh, we have an assistant coach at Putnam Science Academy who would absolutely dig into a wardrobe like that. He has a, a full-length coat, like a full coat that is multicolored. It almost looks like a shag rug <laughs> and uh, very comfortable. Uh, with who he is and uh, does a nice job of being colorful. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, the gauntlet is laid out for the Holy Cross managers who do a terrific job. I, I see it firsthand all the time, but uh, that's a heck of an outfit from the Lafayette manager. Well, I think it sets precedent, yeah. uh, precedent in the league. Pretty good crowd filling, filled in here at the uh, Hart Center for this one. 
Both teams came in one and two in the league. Jaworski for three, ripcord. Well, nice job by Lafayette being patient. Jaworski with a little bit of daylight able to knock that down. He's got eight now. Benzin driving. Green, baseline three, answers. And Green comes up hobbling a little bit as he collided with his own bench. And Green's got 15. Benson with the dribble drive penetration along the baseline. The defense collapses, and then he goes outside to Green. Oh, nice little touch there from Petrie. A two-point shot from Petrie, baseline. 16 points, they let the edge for Holy Cross. Austin Butler back to Benson. Tipped out of bounds, stays with Holy Cross. And stoppage on the floor. We have a timeout to go with it. Holy Cross leads by 16 in search of a home win. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. We never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. All right, welcome back. Crusaders on top by 16 at the under eight timeout. Holy Cross, you know, they, they get a win here against Lafayette. They go to two and two in the Patriot League if they, if they hold serve here and, you know, have some work cut out for them, uh, cut, out, cut out for them ahead of themselves because they are at Bucknell on Monday night. Bucknell, one of the top teams in the league right now. Before returning as part of a doubleheader next week, they have Loyola at home on Saturday. Well, they know that they can play at the top level of this conference, so they've already proven that. Jiva Floyd put back. A huge rebound. You know, he has such great length, and like I said, he gets off his feet really, really quick. And if you don't get a body on him, you know, he's going to get the, uh, the ball off the glass. 18 for Floyd. Having a big return here to the heart center. That's tipped away by Butler. Here comes Benzin the other way. Benzin working on Stevens. And yeah. Stevens disrupted him enough to cause the turnover. Good call by the officials, double dribble. Good defensive effort by the Crusaders mm. to create that turnover. Jaworski to Stevens, and inside, Petrie, active, knocks down another three. Now big bucket there, continues. If you give him space, he's really gonna hurt you. But as I started to say, Holy Cross, uh, you know, with their game against Lehigh, who is uh, favored to win the league, they certainly have shown that up against the medal that they can play with them. So there's no game that they're gonna go into, home or away, with it they even have the fleeting thought that they can't compete. I think certainly some in the league. There's Grandison off the mark. Rebound is tipped in the hands of Jalice. I think Holy Cross is talented as any team in the league, so Holy Cross Lehigh might be a, a preview of a championship game in this league. Now Bucknell will have something to say about that and some other teams as well. Maybe in fact this Lafayette team. Jalice. Kicks out to Jaworski for three. Jaworski hit it, and he's fouled. And just like that, 
Jaworski has brought the team just a little bit closer. It could be 11 after the foul shot. An aggressive mistake by Austin Butler. Commits the foul. He's going to get a breather now. Well, here it is. It goes to the corner. His shot was off and gone. And then Butler got a piece of him. So possible four-point play. Jaworski hits. And it is. Jaworski, an 85% free throw shooter, among the best in the league. And again, not a lot of free throws taken by Lafayette. That might have been the first one that they took. It was. And uh, they're among the best free throw shooting programs in the land the last couple seasons. One of the best number two right now in the Patriot League behind Lehigh. Should have come down to free throws here in the final five minutes. Food just for when thought. You, just when you think that Holy Cross has an opportunity to open things up, Lehigh makes a couple shots and they dig themselves back into it. That one's blocked out of bounds by Good. Four seconds on the shot clock. Into Floyd. There's the hook and it goes down. Jahima Floyd's got 20. Uh, nice soft touch, 20 for 20. And a good way to kind of rescue a, a little mini break that Lafayette was on. Try to stop it a little bit. Oh, I agree, it definitely put a little bit of a slowdown to uh, the tempo that was starting to be created with Lafayette. Stout for three. Stout off the front iron, rebound, Matt Faw. Faw's had some big rebounds, big defensive plays. throughout this game. Grandison started off so hot, he's got 15. Had a big first half, had 13 in the first half. Grandison's fouled going to the hoop. He's gonna get to the line. Well, nice up fake, giving himself a little bit of space to put it to the floor and take it to the glass. Grandison is the second leading scorer at this point in time. Grandison hasn't taken that many free throws. Knocks that one down. In the league, anyway. I think that's his 16th point of the afternoon. 82% free throw shooter for all games. 83% in the league. Made his first. And his second. Holy Cross did not shoot the ball well from the free throw line on Wednesday night. Limited opportunities today, but two for two there for Grandison. That one off the hands of Jalees, recovered by Lafayette. Jarrett looking inside, Jalees. And now a jumper from Stevens off the mark, rebound fall. Haven't really gotten Jalees or Jarrett going here in the second half. Yeah, they haven't had a, uh, an opportunity to get into a groove. Holy Cross has done a nice job on the defensive end. Floyd is fouled by Jalees, and he is going to go to the line again. Well, you take a look here. Again, he turns the corner, drops his shoulder because he sees a little bit of space, puts to the floor with his right hand, takes it hard to the basket. Two for four today, Jahiva Floyd from the line. Makes that one. It might just be me, but he's looked better from the foul line the last two games. He did not have a good second half shooting the free throws against Lehigh, but clearly puts the work in. And that one just rattles off. So right on average, three for six. This looks a little more comfortable at the line or relaxed, and that may lead to some more makes down the road. Petrie, jumper, no, rebound. Caleb Green, here comes Holy Cross, they have numbers. Grandison to the hoop, now he's kicking it out to Benzin. Benzin takes a tour of the paint and then takes it out. Now great patience 
great basketball decision. They didn't force anything. They took their time, pulled it out, and they reset. They're holding a 16-point lead. Here goes Green to the hoop. Off the mark. Rebound is to Jarrett. Comes back to Lafayette. They need points in just about every possession. They're going to get a foul on Faw. It'll just be the third against Holy Cross. But it'll lead to a timeout. 16 points is the margin for Holy Cross. 318 left, separating them from a Patriot League win. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Twenty-one points for Jahiva Floyd, and he's uh, he's attacked the rim today. Oh, he just puts himself in a great rebounding position and it does a great job of protecting the basketball with his body as he takes it to the rack. Now there it is again, that flying will end up move, I'll tell ya. Kept his balance and was able to uh, lay it in. He's just a force to be reckoned with. That move had you clapping and cheering here on press row. I know, I had to, it was to something catch else. myself. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to be, imp are we supposed to be impartial? We are, we're supposed to be impartial. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that was, I mean, anybody does that, you have to kind of applaud that move. Boy. Paul Jalis gets the ball back to Jaworski and he sticks the three. These guys can really shoot it. Well, you talk about a great out of bounds play. Oof. Have your best shooter take it out of bounds and then step right in and knock it down. Jaworski, 44% from beyond the arc and making good there. He's got 15. Oh, great back door. There it is, nice Benson. Move. Grandison to Benson. Benson's man was overplaying him. And again, basketball IQ. Takes it back door, wide open, lay in. Great read. Kicking it out. This, a deep shot from Perry, and it's a three. For Ty Tyrone Perry. Lead is down to 12. Two and a half minutes to play. Benzin spinning by, Benzin to the lane, kicks out the Butler. Butler for three, and front iron no good, and almost taken away by Benzin. He's gonna pick up a foul. That'll, That'll be reach. the fourth on Holy Cross. Lafayette getting what they need, stops, and now they need really points in every possession. Jarrett, Jaworski, that's a two. It's good. Jaworski's a shooter, shooter, shoot. He knocks it down. Boy, I'll tell you, he, uh, he has a great stroke. Average 13.1 points a game coming into today, and a 17 on the afternoon. Lead is 10. Holy Cross gets it into Floyd. Floyd's going to slam this. Well, relatively routine. At I that don't. Point. I don't know what gave that away. But <laughs> the defense tried to make the steal, and uh, Floyd. You just don't wow. want to give him the ball without someone in front of him because yeah. nobody's going to step in and draw the charge. No. Twelve-point game, approaching a minute. Petrie's three, no good. Jaworski tried to take one for the team there. Academy Awards are. Coming up. <laughs> 10 seconds on the shot. Appreciate that effort, though. There's Floyd, and Floyd got bumped. They're going to get a foul. This one's on Jaworski. 
fifth team foul against Lafayette, so Crusaders will get the ball out of bounds. A minute, a little over a minute to play. You know, sportsmanship, Lucas Jarrett uh, reached down and helped Floyd up, but his teammates had uh, beaten him to it. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Crusaders. Well, oh, there's there's the mistake, and then as soon as his eyes just light up because there's nobody in front of him, and uh, he knows with his athleticism what's next. Lafayette wants apparently wants one of his guys to give a foul. They're not doing it quite yet. They go inside. Floyd reverse layup. Twenty five for Floyd. Well, he's having a great ball game. There he and is, knocking it away. He's still aggressively defending. 14 points, the margin for Holy Cross. There you go. Takes it baseline, goes under the glass. Reverse layup with the right hand. And Jahima Floyd comes off, and he gets a nice ovation from the Hart Center crowd. Big time performance today at home. Jaworski steps in. This is a three. Just trills it. It almost looks effortless. You know, and, and he doesn't have any emotion, you know, when he knocks it down. It's almost like it just, this is the expectation. Yeah, Justin Jaworski. Schwanksville, Pennsylvania. Just a sophomore. Again, one of those talented sophomores that Fran O'Hanlon has. The lead is 11 for Holy Cross. It would take something special to come back in this one but stranger things have happened i don't know where <laughs> but 36.5 seconds just trying to keep the viewers oh, engaged <laughs> engaged okay let's I show more to... let's show more of the kid in the leopard suit there he is <laughs> there he goes yeah but 62-73, they certainly can. You know, I mean, you remember you used to play Nerf ball. Yeah, oh yeah, Nerf you ball, know. anything can happen. Right, yeah. you know, so foul, three-point play, four-point play. You get the ball in. You need Reggie Miller, I think, in this situation. So a Reggie Miller-like versus the New York Knicks back in the day for something to happen. And uh, maybe... Maybe Dylan Hastings is that guy. He checks back in for Lafayette. They're going to put his 6'8 frame on the ball, and Caleb Green gets it into Benzin. And they foul Caleb Green, who's the top foul shooter, free throw shooter on the Holy Cross roster. But they have a couple more to give before that happens, or one more anyway. Just the sixth team foul against Lafayette. Side out of bounds play. They get the ball in. There you go. Oh, Butler. And who touched it last? Last touch by Stout. And now Holy Cross will inbound under their own basket. Clock is not moving awfully fast. 31 seconds remaining. In what otherwise has been a lightning round game. This one started at 3 o'clock. Foul before the inbound, and that will get Holy Cross to the line for one and one. Matt Faw is going to be at the line. Faw is a 79% foul shooter, free throw shooter. And he rips the first one through. Now Holy Cross Monday, quick turnaround, goes to Bucknell. Tough place to play, Soika Pavilion. Crusaders will have a win at their backs heading to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. And another foul called there, and now Butler's gonna go to the line. Missed the front end. Rebound Stevens. 
Jaworski's going to pull this one. And he hits it. Why not? Jaworski's on fire. You know, I don't know if you noticed this, but when he came by us, they had the, you know, the kick out to him. When he yeah. came by us, he was blowing a bubble. Was he? You know, with his bubble with his gun. bubble gun? Yeah, absolutely. Just, Just before he knocked another one down. Here he as is. He goes through. Take a look at it. No. Well, Jaworski, I'll tell you. Jaworski is not being cheated on these threes. He is a, uh, at least today, he's a prolific scorer. I mean, what a great job he's done. One more opportunity to see the leopard suit. And the purple shirt underneath. I mean, he, so he comes to Holy Cross. He's got a purple shirt. That's the color of the well, opponent. I, th I think, yeah, the burgundy is really, you know, he was trying to. He's trying to go for that. Yeah, I think so. So, okay. you know, the lavender really is in the All right. burgundy vein. Okay. Same family. Right. All right. right. I got you. So I think that's probably, uh, you know, I mean, he's a young man that's in college. I'm sure he doesn't have a, a whole wardrobe. He doesn't. He, uh, he's Lafayette's not giving him a wardrobe allowance. Likely not. Right, right. The <laughs> chances are not good. 23 points for Jaworski, by the way. The lead is 9 with 23, well, 22.8 seconds left. Holy Cross has to get the ball in, and then they'll find themselves at the foul line, I imagine, relatively quickly. Lafayette. 54% from the three-point line, or beyond the three-point arc. 14 of 26. See him watching Jaworski. You know, he's he just loves blowing bubbles. <laughs> he's chewing bubbles. What a great player. Oh, a steal. And then inside to Stevens. And now the lead is seven. 17 seconds left. You get it into Benzin. Benzin will be fouled by Stout. Pat Benson's a 63% shooter from the free throw line. And this is the last one and one, so this is a big one. Faithful here at the Heart Center are singing some sort of tune. And there's one for Benson. Yeah, I think the tune is about stop fouling, yeah. but it's getting him back in the ball game. Five for Benzin. That was a big one. He makes them both. Under 12 seconds to play. Here comes Stout. Stout kicks it out. Stevens has to pull the three. He trills it. The lead is six. Seven seconds left. Crusaders have to get the ball in. Quick foul, and they... Get it with six seconds left. Grandison's going to go to the line. Grandison again, 82% from the free throw line. Two for two today. Lead is down to six, though. You're right. I mean, this was 16 not too long ago. Lafayette has fought their way back. Two shots for Grandison, makes the first. Seven point game now. That pretty much would seal it, you would think. Silence in the hard center. Grandison, back iron, that's fine the, for them, for Holy Cross. Time runs off, three, two, one. They're not even gonna get a shot off, as Elise does. Front iron, that's it. A win for Holy Cross. 77 to 70, and they had to earn it over Fran O'Hanlon's Lafayette Leopards. Kevin and I are back to wrap things up of this doubleheader sweep for the Crusaders right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. 
presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Welcome to the Mayor's Forum. I'm Mayor Joe Petty. Join Mayor Petty as he sits down with local politicians, city employees, and community leaders in the city of Worcester. And there's, it's kind of 60-40 split. 60% of what we really do is to solicit and bring in events, meetings, conferences, conventions into the market. We can also educate businesses and, and also inform them in terms of what their consumers are really saying. The Mayor's Forum on Charter TV3. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. More than a dozen people are now without a home. A serious two-vehicle crash in Worcester shuts down an exit on 190. The Cannabis Control Commission is making Worcester its new home. New Pawsock Stadium in Worcester is now one step closer to reality. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. All right, welcome back. 77 to 70, Holy Cross over Lafayette. Coach Bill Carmody is with us. Coach, a win is a win. You got, you're happy, right? Yeah, no, you can't really be happy <laughs> when, because we've seen this before. We've had, uh, you know, big leads and then it dwindles. And we know it's a three-point shooting team and they probably had 15 threes tonight. I don't know. And two nights ago, three nights ago, they got 15 threes. We just said, just stay close to them. The, the, and we just kept coming off the shooters and they made them. They never quit, and we were fortunate that we got such a big lead. Quick turnaround, you have Bucknell on Monday, but you have a win, and the way you guys battled in this one early, does it obviously helps you going to Lewisburg? Well, I mean, it's a win. I'm glad we got the win, you know, uh, but I, I just wish that we were, um, with a lead, we could figure out how to uh, play better, like lengthen a lead. You get to 18, does it have to go down to seven? You know, does it have to do that? Why are we missing foul shots? All right, what, what are we doing? Why are we giving their best shooters open shots? So those are the things we got to work on. And coach, just just lastly, Jaiva Floyd, big game today. And you know, you got, again, balance from a lot of different guys today, scoring wise, offensively. Yeah, I mean, we had it the other night also. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Caleb and, um, and Jacob threw some nice passes in there, made some uh, shots early on uh, in the first half. And, uh, you know, we just have to, we have to tighten things up because um, we, we can't let leads just uh, dissipate like that. Good luck in, in, uh, in Lewisburg against Bucknell Thank on you. Monday. Appreciate right. it. Thanks for the time, Coach. All right, that was Coach Bill Carmody with us in, in the post-game show. And now he's got to make the rounds. He's going, going to the radio. Good to, good of, good of uh, uh, Dick Lutzk, our, our partner over there on the radio, to give us a little extra time with, with Coach before he had to grab him. But uh, Kevin Wells, first off, a win for Holy Cross. It did get tight there at the end. But what did you see from the Crusaders that, uh, you know, gives them a little spark going forward. You know, I really think that uh, defensively, I thought they did a great job matching up. I think that they uh, extended uh, the offensive sets of Lafayette, so they ended up using the majority of the shot clock. I thought offensively, they executed pretty well. I think Coach uh, really summed it up. He said, we knew they were a three-point shooting team. He said they had 15 threes the other night. And uh, as far as I know, they have 15 threes tonight as sure. well. So um, it's a good team. It's a talented team. The puzzle pieces that you're putting together as you build going into the league. So they're at 500 right now. Uh, it's a team that can certainly contest for the league title. They've just got to continue to build on their success. Holy Cross gets 25 from Jahiva Floyd, 18 from Jacob Grandison, 15 from Caleb Green, and 10 from Austin Butler as they spread that offense around for a 77 to 70 win over Lafayette. Well, it was a doubleheader sweep for Holy Cross. Our next game on Charter TV3, high school basketball, Friday night hoops, Grafton and Bartlett. We begin live at Friday night at seven from Webster, Mass. For Kevin Wells and Sean Grady, the man in the leopard suit, 
Dave Bulldock, our entire production team here at Charter TV3 did such great work here during this doubleheader. I'm Andy Lacombe saying thanks for watching everybody. The Holy Cross women winners earlier and the men with a big win over Lafayette here tonight. Good, at, good evening everyone and we'll see you next time.